About India The advent of the Indus Valley Civilization, also known as Harappan Civilization, marks the beginning of India's history. Around 2500 BC, it reached its peak. The Indus Valley was home to the largest of Egypt's, Mesopotamia's, India's, and China's ancient urban civilizations. Nothing was known about this civilization until the 1920s, when the Indian Archaeological Department conducted excavations in the Indus Valley, uncovering the ruins of two ancient towns, Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. Ruins of structures and other items such as domestic items, weapons of battle, gold and silver jewelry, seals, toys, pottery products, and other artifacts demonstrate that a highly developed civilization flourished in this region between 4 and 5,000 years ago. We're excited to show you some of the past and present historical Indian monuments. Please like and subscribe. Agra Fort, Agra The magnificent 16th century Mughal landmark known as the Red Fort of Agra is located near the Taj Mahal's gardens. The imperial capital of the Mughal kings is contained inside the 2.5 km long enclosure walls of this formidable red sandstone citadel. The fort's intimidating exteriors conceal an inner paradise. The Modi Masjid, a white marble mosque resembling a perfect pearl, Diwani Am, Diwani Kaz, Muzam and Burjay. Where Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan died in 1666 AD, Jahangir's palace, Kaz Mahal and Shish Mahal are just a few of the magnificent structures. Agra Fort is one of India's few UNESCO World Heritage Sites and an exceptional example of Mughal architecture. The construction of the Agra Fort began in 1565, when the Mughal Emperor Akbar built the basic structures, and was later carried over by his grandson Shah Jahan, who added the majority of the marble works to the fort. The fort is crescent-shaped, with a long, nearly straight wall facing the river on the east side. It is surrounded by red sandstone ramparts with twin castellated ramparts and bastions at regular intervals. The outer wall is surrounded by a 9m wide and 10m deep moat. A towering 22 meter high inner wall gives the impression of an impregnable defensive structure. The fort's layout was decided by the stream of the river, which flowed alongside at the time. The main axis is parallel to the river and the walls bridge out towards the city. The primary axis runs parallel to the river, and the walls span the river to the city. The fort had four gates at first, but two of them were eventually sealed up. Visitors are now only permitted to enter through the Amar Singh Gate. As the visitor goes via Amar Singh Gate, the first significant building he sees is Jahangir Mahal. Jahangir was Akbar's son and the Mughal throne's heir. Akbar constructed Jahangir Mahal as a women's apartments. It's made of stone and has a simple outside design. A big stone bowl has been engraved with ornate Persian phrases, which were most likely used to hold fragrant rose water. For his favorite Queen Jodabai, Akbar erected a palace next to Jahangir Mahal. The Kaz Mahal, which was built completely of marble by Shah Jahan, has strong Islamic Persian elements. These are well combined with a remarkable array of Hindu elements, such as Chhatris. It is thought to be the emperor's sleeping quarters, or Aramga. The most successful example of painting on a white marble surface is the Kaz Mahal. The Museum in Burjay, erected by the British, stands to the left of the Kaz Mahal. It's an octagonal tower with an open pavilion that's rather lovely. Its openness, elevation, and pleasant evening breezes are all assets. On his deathbed, Shah Jahan gazed at the Taj Mahal from this location. The Glass Palace, also known as Shish Mahal, is the best example of beautiful water engineering in the Hammams. It is thought to have been a harem or dressing room, and its walls are inlaid with tiny mirrors that are among India's best examples of glass mosaic ornamentation. The Hall of Private Audience, Diwanika is, located to the right of Shish Mahal. Semi-precious stones and lovely flower designs are set into the marble pillars. The Mamami Shahi, also known as the Shah Burjay, is located nearby and serves as a summer getaway. The iconic peacock throne used to be housed in the Diwan e Am, but it was transported to the Red Fort when Shah Jahan moved his headquarters to Delhi. The throne alcove is made of white marble with ornate carvings. The private mosque of the ladies of the court, 
Najina Masjid, was built by Shah Jahan. The Pearl Mosque, also known as Modi Masjid, is the most beautiful edifice at Agra Fort. Near Modi Masjid is Mina Masjid, which appears to have been built solely for Shah Jahan's personal usage. Please like and subscribe. Ajunta and Ellora Caves The paintings and sculptures in the caves of Ajunta and Ellora, inspired by Buddhism and its compassionate ethos, began in the 2nd century BC and continued into the 6th century AD, unleashing a rush of artistic excellence unparalleled in human history. These ornately carved Buddhist and Jain caves are serene and meditative, exuding a divine spirit and force. The rock out caves of Ajunta are located about 107 km from Aurangabad, Maharashtra and are tucked in a panoramic canyon in the shape of a huge horseshoe. Ajunta is a collection of 29 caverns that contain some of the earliest Buddhist buildings, cave paintings, and sculptures. Chita halls or shrines devoted to Lord Buddha, as well as viharas or monasteries used by Buddhist monks for meditation and study of Buddhist teachings, are found in these caverns. The paintings that adorn the cave's walls and ceilings portray events from Lord Buddha's life as well as numerous Buddhist divinities. The Jataka Tales depicting many episodes connected to the Buddha's earlier incarnations as Bodhisattva, a holy being destined to become the Buddha, are among the most intriguing paintings. Despite the ravages of time, these intricate sculptures and paintings maintain an amazing grandeur. Sculptures of Buddha, peaceful and quiet in contemplation, are interspersed among the gorgeous imagery and paintings. Ellora's cave temples and monasteries, dug from the vertical face of an escarpment, are located 26 kilometers north of Aurangabad. Sculptors carved beautiful rock engravings influenced by Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism. The 34 caves, which run in a straight line, comprise Buddhist chaitayas, halls of worship, viharas, monasteries, and Hindu and Jain temples. The earliest excavation here is of the Dumerlina, which spans around 600 years between the 5th and 11th centuries AD. Cave 29 Without a question, the most impressive excavation is that of the Great Kailasa Temple. Cave 16, which is the world's largest monolithic structure. It was known as Veral in ancient times and has continued to attract pilgrims throughout the centuries. The paintings and sculptures of Ajunta and Ellora, which have been designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites since 1983 and are considered masterpieces of Buddhist religious art have had a significant impact on the development of art in India. The cave paintings of Ajunta are one of the high watermarks of artistic inventiveness due to their creative use of color and freedom of expression in depicting human and animal forms. The Ellora has been conserved as an artistic legacy that will inspire and enhance future generations. With its temples dedicated to Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, this cave complex is not only a remarkable aesthetic masterpiece and an excellent example of technological exploit, but it also exemplifies the spirit of tolerance that was characteristic of ancient India. Please like and subscribe. Ajunta is a collection of 29 caverns. Baha'i Temple Delhi A lotus-shaped outline has imprinted itself on the psyche of the city's people in the heart of New Delhi, India's bustling capital catching their imagination, fueling their curiosity, and revolutionizing the concept of worship. The Baha Mishri Keladkar, also known as the Lotus Temple, is a Baha Shrine. With the arrival of each new day, an increasing number of tourists flock to its gates to marvel at its beauty and soak up the serenely spiritual atmosphere. Since its dedication to public worship in December 1986, this Indian subcontinent's mother temple has welcomed millions of visitors, making it one of the country's most visited structures. The Lotus Blossom is unparalleled in Indian iconography as an evocative image of beauty and purity, as well as a symbol of deity. The Lotus, which emerges from stagnant water pure and unblemished, signifies God's emergence. This ancient Indian symbol was used to produce a design of ethereal beauty and seeming simplicity, despite the sophisticated geometry that underpins its concrete execution. The Lotus Temple is a stunning blend of ancient notion, modern mechanical prowess, and architectural imagination. Many of the temple's many visitors have been moved by its soothingly calm prayer hall and tranquil environs, 
prompting them to seek out the temple's inspirational source and capture a piece of its tranquilly for themselves. The awe is instilled by the eerie silence that surrounds the hall. Its eloquent stillness and divine atmosphere have moved some. The tranquilly and beauty of the Sanctum Sanctorum touch people in different ways. The erection of Bahapur's Baha House of Worship was a key milestone in Baha'i history on the Indian subcontinent. Baha'is have done everything they can to make their places of worship as attractive and distinctive as possible. It not only embodies the worldwide Baha community's spiritual aspirations and core principles, but, more importantly in a land of many religions, it has begun to be recognized as a unifying link, bringing disparate concepts into harmony via its principle of oneness, of God, religion, and mankind. The temple, with its complete lack of idols, provokes both amazement and admiration. Visitors are perplexed by the lack of a deity, but are awestruck by the structure's beauty and majesty. The following is a typical response. The spirit is eloquent, and there is quiet. One has the impression of finally attaining the soul's estate, a state of serenity and peace. The Lotus Temple is one of the century's 100 canonical works, a powerful image of remarkable beauty that has transcended its original function as a gathering place to become a significant architectural symbol. The temple has received honors and worldwide recognition as a symbol of faith and human effort put in the way of God. The temple was awarded the GLOB Art Academy 2000 Award in 2004 and the magnitude of Taj Mahal of the 20th century service of promoting the unity and harmony of people of all nations, religions, and social strata, to an extent unsurpassed by any other architectural monument worldwide, according to the award. Please like and subscribe. The Bara Imam Bara, Lucknow. Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh in northern India, is a contemporary metropolis with wonderful ancient monuments to boast about. Lucknow is recognized for its gardens, parks, and unique archaeological structures. It is located on the banks of the Gomti River, a tributary of the Gunga. Lucknow, also known as the Nawab City, has maintained its allure as a haven of culinary and cultural delights. This city's residents are noted for their exquisite elegance, civility, and fluency in Urdu. Lucknow is also known for its special embroidered garment fabrics known as shikan. The city is home to the Ibarra Imambara, an ancient structure of such stunning beauty that even modern architects are baffled by it. Nawab Asaf Udidala built the Imambara in 1784, and its architect was Kifay Aula, who is thought to be a relative of the Taj Mahal's architect. This massive and magnificent edifice, which was built by the Nawab as part of a famine relief effort, is also known as a Saifa Imambara. With Gothic elements, the structure combines Rajput and Mughal structures. The Bara Imambara is a fascinating structure. It is neither a mosque nor a mausoleum, but rather a massive structure with fascinating features. The use of vaults and the structure of the halls reveal a strong Islamic influence. The Bara Imambara is, in fact, a large hall at the end of a splendid courtyard with two magnificent triple-arched entrances. The Imambara's principal hall is over 50 meters long and 16 meters broad. This columnless hall has a ceiling that is more than 15 meters high. The hall is one of the world's largest of its sort, with no external support in the form of wood, iron, or stone beams. The roof was constructed entirely of interlocking bricks, with no beams or girders. As a result, it is regarded as a singular architectural feat. The structure, which is made up of three large rooms, features an astonishing maze of tunnels hidden between its 20-foot-thick walls. This deep, gloomy maze known as the Bul Balaya should only be visited by the brave. It is a complex network of about 1,000 passages, some of which have dead ends, some of which end in precipitous fall, and others which lead to entrance or exit locations. If you want to take a tour of the secret labyrinth without getting lost, you should hire a authorized guide. The five-story Bailai, Step Well, from the Prinawabi era is another fascinating building at the Imambara. This Bailai is connected to the River Gomti and is known as the Shahi Hammam, Royal Bath. Only the first two stories are above water, with the remainder always submerged. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.